Hello Final Fantasy fans and welcome back to another deck spotlight. Today I'm so excited to bring you the mono win deck that our own Six Ages Justin piloted to an undefeated. This guy destroyed the entire win -a box tournament and this is something that we've been doing out of Gamers Gauntlet that pulls in people from the Tri-State area. So it's a very serious thing with people coming out, people want to battle and he just ran through the entire thing. So huge shout out to Justin. Now this is a list that we've seen originally topped in Japan then I think it would got some love in Italy and it, it's really been making the rounds and yes more or less it's going to have kind of the same key themes or packages in it with a slight variation so if you've seen something like this before it's not too surprising of course when we have these kind of mono element decks there's not a lot of room to really work with however I think there's a few choices that are absolutely spicy and worth talking about and again I want to give a huge shout out to Justin for being able to crush the entire tournament with this deck and again, it does come down to probably a meta call at the end of the day. If you're expecting a lot of decks that want to target your own stuff, like say Mono Lightning, then this deck is going to be absolutely insane. You're going to win every single matchup. But that's enough ranting about how awesome this deck can be in the right meta and how awesome Justin is. Let's get right into it. So we saw that the deck is called Hexproof. This is a term for magic, but generally what it means is your guys can't be targeted by your opponent's stuff. It makes it really difficult for your opponent that who might have those Odins or they have S abilities that they want to use that they just can't target your stuff. So let's take a look at Ranger to start. He's going to be carrying on this theme that we're going to see. 3 drop 7k is perfectly fine. It becomes an 8k because we're playing Maria. And then we have, again have these battle tricks that we can play. So Ranger right off the bat is a very efficient forward that can just turn sideways early. And it can't be chosen by your opponent's abilities. So if they tried to al it or something like that nature, it's just not going to work. You basically have to hope that you're going to have an Odin or some kind of premier removal to ultimately remove Ranger. Past that we have Trey, which is another two of. And Trey is a guy that just... Is really annoying to play against if he's active can't be chosen by abilities if he's dulled can't be chosen by summon so you can really play this kind of defensive game with him where based on the deck that you're playing against and what you think your opponent might have you might be just leaving him up on defense every single turn or you might be just leaving him sideways if they're a very summon heavy deck so he kind of fills both roles and is absolutely amazing for being a four drop 9k with the Maria backup and then lastly we have the true absolute powerhouse of the deck itself and we have Connie Senna which I have to imagine or just express that watching Justin live the dream of going Bart's into this card uh just feels great absolutely great and then beyond that if of course you have the other two parts it's going to get bigger but you also get to activate all the backups here again so the absolute live the dream turn in this game that you will lose on the spot. I'm just going to be blunt unless you're playing against Earth and they have Shantoto. You can do Bart's into Connie Senna into Minerva. Uh, and he did that against me a couple times. And let me tell you, folks, it didn't feel great. But it's absolutely kind of a, you know, Exodia hand, if you will. Kind of live the dream. Christmas ma magical world. Whatever you want to fill in here. But when it happens, it, it's really good. So, again, she's a 5-drop. She plays in the same theme that with Bart's you're going to be able to do multiple things with her. Which is really the important part. She gets bigger. She can't be targeted based on the backups. But... The fact it's a 5-drop 10k when it's all set in stone and just can't be targeted makes this a card that says, hey, I'm going to turn this sideways every single turn. This is getting through for damage and there's just nothing you can do about it. And then the Bart's effect to activate all your backups is just the true icing on the cake. Of course, with Wind, it's been a little bit difficult to have kind of that premium removal. And we picked up a few spells, but Balthier and Barbarisha have been kind of the mainstay for this element so you get to play Barbarisha first you get to reduce something to a thousand power and then Balthier is going to shoot it for 2,000 damage effectively killing it it's also worth noting here that Balthier does have a very nice S that we want to be using as well just making it even more difficult for our opponent to target our stuff so you're gonna be playing against your opponent they're gonna have these things you can't target you're gonna play a Balthier maybe they've been saving that removal for it and if you get off that fires of war which again doesn't have dull or anything so you just you can play it on the turn that you play him if needed that it's going to make it really hard for your opponent to remove him as well. Also, not going to happen that often, but you do get to activate him when you play a backup. So there's multiple cases where you could shoot something, play a backup, shoot something again, and it's something small, kill it off. But that's really not going to happen um, too often in this deck. It's really all about the interaction between Balthier and Barbarisha. And then rounding out some of our forwards, we have the more techie choices. So... I would say the the core of the deck, the previous forwards that we've talked about, really all do stay the same. There's about these five cards that are really flexible, and maybe maybe you change a three of to a two of, and some of the other cards that we've talked about, so they're a little bit flexible. But I wouldn't change those too much. If you're looking for something to change, it would probably be in this lineup. 
We have a one of Dorgan, remove it from the game, remove another four from the game. And this is just great because it's, again, wind can be really lacking in the removal sometimes. So this is just a great answer all uh, for some other decks you might be playing against. We have a two of Moogle. As you guys know, it's one of my favorite wind cards right now. Uh, four drop effective 7k in the deck. Enters the field, draw a card. When it goes from field to break zone, draw a card. So it's going to pay for itself. And in a deck that's going to be able to make off these turns like Bart's into Kanisan into whatever, being able to play a Moogle on that same turn is just going to be great to get another card in your hand and be a, just a throwaway blocker at the end of the day. So it's really helpful in getting that card advantage back into your hand. And then lastly, kind of the, the main card that Justin switched uh, after a little bit of convincing and was an absolute powerhouse for him is Sedan. Anytime that you're going against a deck, you're going to know, okay, if they have this card in the next couple turns, I, I'm just going to lose on the spot. And that's where Zidane comes into play. Before you set up your explosive Barts into, you know, empty your hand plays, you want to be able to play Zidane to look at their hand and say, okay, this is what they have. I know the cards that can be playing over the next couple turns. You know, maybe they have that Shantoto in their hand, you make them discard it, and then you can just go off for the next turn worry-free. But overall, it's just a card that gives you that sense of security when you really need it. The other effect that, you know, if your opponent has two or less cards, it it's not going to happen as much as you would like. It's nice when it does because it can be a three drop AK after making them discard a card in that late game where you're both in top deck mode, but you're not really banking on that. Again, you're really just holding on to this card to make sure that your turn, uh, next turn or the turn after is going to be clear of any kind of problematic cards. And then we have the powerhouse themselves that we've kind of talked about, Bart's EX Burst. Uh, five drop, nine K, activate all wind characters. So important thing to note here is that while Connie Sano does just your backups, Bart's is going to do your forwards and your backups as well. So, or I guess, and the monster we're gonna talk about here in a moment, but he's gonna activate all those things. So it's great that you can swing out with your board, play a Bart's, activate everything again, and then be ready for defense. This has been just an absolute all-star in these wind-based dominant decks since Opus 1. So Bart's is one of those cards that as long as we see kind of mono wind as an as a deck, or as we see decks that are going heavy in mono wind or heavy in wind and splash in some other colors, Bart's is going to be a good choice, and it's an EX burst which can help you know bring you into the game out of nowhere that your opponent might not be expecting. And then for the last forward, we have Minerva, or as we like to call it, Winerva. It is a seven drop. It is expensive, but. Boy, does it feel good when you get to do the live the dream turns. And not only that, you will notice after playing this deck is it's very easy to get out multiple cards, play multiple things in a turn, play your forwards, and then just have no cards in hand. Ultimately, you want to be playing this for the drawing an extra card effect. We have so many ways that we can just cheat out multiple things or make multiple things active in a turn that it's going to make the most sense to do it. That, no, that said, it's worth noting that it does, the other two effects do help out. When you have plus 3,000 power, that is a huge power swing in your favor, and blinking all your opponent's cards can also be relevant. But in these, my personal ranking would be drawing power, blanking, kind of in that order, just on how the deck kind of plays out. Of course, it's all going to depend on your board state and whatnot, but I think all three modes are extremely relevant given today's meta. Then, this little monster des deserves his own slide. I gotta say that Kobolroid Yin has been... What, just an amazing card. I think this is a lot of un, kind of under the radar for a lot of people. And, you know, it's only a rare, so maybe we were just getting around to testing it. But I'd say let, within the last week to a week and a half, maybe, um, or maybe two weeks by the time that this recording goes live, it, it's been a card that sees more and more play. And it's one of those things that I, I absolutely wrote it off when we started. I 100% admit that. Uh, and then, and as I said in one of our other videos, Justin basically soloed me with it. And then I had Odin it, and that was the worst feeling probably ever in my life. Um, so it's not, it's not to be, uh, not to be a card to be taken lightly. And because Fords have cost three or more can't block it, it's, unless you're going against like a Golbez deck, I mean, not many people are playing relevant two drops anymore. They're going to block this. So it leaves your opponent with, okay, maybe you're fire and you can use one of your backups to ping it for 4,000. Great. But if you're not one of those decks or ha maybe have like a Magus, if you're lightning, your interactions to this card are extremely limited. So it's, it's one of those things that can really catch your opponent off guard and is generally going to be good for a point or two of damage. Anything past that is is just gravy. It's a one drop, costs one to activate, and your opponent's wasting an Odin on it or something, the premium removal. This card is nothing but pluses for this deck. And then we're going to go into our summon lineup with the kind of where we're at, where we've been and where we are for summon. So three Diablos, probably not that surprising because we are in wind. You get multiple backups out in a turn. You can activate them with Aerith, play more backups. It's very easy to get out multiple characters in a turn. So dealing with 1,000 damage for each character you control is really not that 
hard to get going where you might kill a 7, 8, or even 9k powered forward. Speaking of 9k powered forward, though, we have the new Alexander. And this card has been... Whoo! It has done some work, let me tell you. Uh, of course, it's really going to depend on the matchup. So if you're playing against some lin wind um, lightning decks, or if you're playing against some ice lightning decks more often, you know, it, it can be very hard to f get forwards that are 9k. You know, might kill like an Orlando, sure. Uh, but outside of that, everything is usually 8,000 power or less because they're banking on multiple card interactions or they're using Shivas and stuff to dull your field where power isn't relevant. So this card is going to either go from it's an absolute all-star and going to win, you know, save your skin, or it's just something you're throwing away to pitch for other cards. Now, again, that's perfectly fine because when we think about the matchup, you can kind of think about or envision what cards you're going to be playing against and what cards might be problematic for you. And if you realize that they're not going to have any 9,000 power forwards, just toss this card. It makes your other cards in the deck much more alive and gives you that option to just discard it without feeling terrible about it. And of course, you know, these three, these first three summons are all EX bursts. So maybe you get a lucky EX burst when you need it too, and it still gets the job done. Then we have Alexander, the four, break of five costs or more forward. Um, so this one can be great if they have a lower cost, uh, five cost four that you might have a little bit difficult with but it's still a high value target again another ex burst cost four only a two of because it is kind of one of those situations where it, it really is only good against some decks otherwise you're just pitching it and then lastly we have bail for the bounce one or return all forwards to their owner's hands uh this card hurts uh, i was playing lightning ice and justin uh, at the you know quote end of my turn which puts your opponent back in their second main phase so they can do more stuff again but i was playing lightning ice and even if i had five backups he bounced my field back to my hand and like oh i have all these three and four drops now uh great ruined my turn and then of course on his next turn he did the bards and the county sauna into whatever other whatever else he played at that point uh, i think he did that into moogle into another forward he played like four or five forwards on that turn um and needless to say i lost the game from there but it's a very cheeky thing that pays off and can do very well in this deck because of what it wants to be doing. So I will say, um, if I'm not mistaken, none of the mono wind decks played Bell 4, but I would 100% throw a fun of in there because it's going to surprise you for the turns you can pull off with it. And then we have our backups to finish up this deck spotlight. Of course, we have the two other Senas, the Rhea Osena and Aron Senna which is really going to just power up the other cards. So one is just saying that if you control the other two, your Connie Sana can't be chosen by your opponent's ability. So again, making it very difficult for your opponent to target it. And then if you have um, the other one, you get to search for the Rayo Sana um, or Connie Sana as well. So you get, you get a searcher, you get a protector, and it just, it does everything that you want it to be doing. And again, because we are, we need to find these cards, you're playing either two or three of them, and then extra copies are just discarded when you need them. But it helps you assemble kind of the the, the tri trifecta of big powerful uh, four that is difficult to remove. Moving into our backups, these are a bit more flexible, but can ultimately you know choose on what your meta is going to be looking like. We have two Oracle, put in the break zone, activate all characters. So again, same thing with Bart's, you get to activate all your characters. And this again allows you to do things where you're playing a bunch of stuff. Maybe you have five backups, you leave Oracle untapped. You break Oracle after combat, activate all your stuff, play more forwards, and then get to keep going into this loop. Um, it's also worth noting that if you're going against some of the ice decks, which uh, can be very it can be very difficult for win based on the matchup and kind of what they're playing or what they have to activate your guys. So Oracle just comes through in a pinch when you really need him. Archer breaks a backup of cost three or less, so it can break all the power backups uh, other than Maria. So the power can be even more in your favor than otherwise just gets rid of problematic backups that you might need to answer. White Mage has been a very surprising card for being able to activate something, give it a thousand power. When we're playing this deck that says, hey, I have this, you know, 10, 9k, 10k that's just attacking every turn, and then I can leave this White Mage up for only one in itself, you go, sure, if you want to attack, be my guest, I'm going to ready this 10k forward. So do you have a Cyclops or something in your hand that's going to turn this into a favorable uh, attack or maybe they have to then a party attack so that you're, you're you're technically taking one less damage than what you might uh, be expected to otherwise so leaving up white mage is just a huge threat for this deck and can keep things going in your favor we then have Aerith and maria now Aerith is a very interesting choice here because it can activate three backups and you might be thinking okay well the planet protector is really good but what about the other Aerith? what about some of the other choices and i just have to say after seeing how Justin has been able to pile up the deck and how good it's been 
the untap is really what you want this for. Now, don't get me wrong. Planet Protector is absolutely insane. Your opponent is going to leave the match absolutely frustrated uh, for how good this can be against them. Because not only do you get to activate all your forwards, they can't be chosen by summons or abilities that turn. So you can set up this thing where um, they go to try to target your one last guy that is left active for a flocker. You can go, oh no, excuse me, I'm going to Planet Protector. That guy is still going to live. Oh, and by the way, I have all these other blockers, which now you can't do anything about. So it is a very welcomed card to come back from Opus One Days. And I think it might be something that starts to see a little bit more play again, uh, just by just for purely how strong Planet Protector is. And because, well, we have another Aerith to use, so why not? Uh, and then we have Maria, of course, just having a thousand power is going to make all your guys bigger. And that's where you want to be. So that is the deck for today. I really hope you guys will give this a try at your local meta. Again, Justin has been working on this over the last couple of weeks. He wanted me to mention that the deck was all foils, so it was he was beating the, his opponents in style. And I think that it's just so nice to see more of these mono decks coming through. You know, we have a deeper card pool. There's more things you can be playing. We still haven't seen um, certain element combinations coming together, but mono wind was really a, kind of on the back foot for a while and finally has its day uh, in the spotlight. So if you guys like this video, make sure to drop us a like. That really does help us out a ton. Comment down below what other decks that you would like to see featured in our deck spotlight, or if you did well at a recent event and would love to share your deck list with us, you can message us on Facebook or at our uh, Gmail account as well. And of course, subscribe for future Final Fantasy trading card game content. So on behalf of myself and the rest of the Six Sages, this video made possible thanks to our Patreon supporters. Thank you to our honorary Sages.